What's up, family? This is Super Mike 2164. Got a few points and thoughts on my mind I want to take uh, touch base with everybody on. Just throwing some stuff out there. Uh, peace to the family. Uh, and greetings. Greetings. Uh, I want to make a I want to touch on a, a few points that I thought. Now, Minister Farrakhan, the Minister Farrakhan uh, of the Nation of Islam, is my teacher and a lot of people's teacher. He gave us some. He he put some something out in the world for us to deal with. Uh, also, I want to deal with. Uh, the brothers the no fucking around coalition NA excuse me NFAC which is a armed, armed group of black people out here uh, I just want to touch on a few thoughts on that and I want to touch on the thoughts of uh, self-development so basically Minister Farrakhan some of the uh, major topics that stuck out with me in the criterion criterion means judgment you see this is how you tell what's good from bad this is what's sorely needed from in the black community because the 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 reason why we've been dominated the reason why we've been able to be dominated is because we haven't had a clear criterion. You know, a clear way to tell what's good, what's bad. Clear. We're always arguing about what's good and who's to say, who by whose standard. and Everything is all nebulous. And when you have nebulous standards, you are not stable. When you are not stable, you can't build on an unstable foundation, right? So isn't that, you know, if you think about that, just the logic. If you can't tell what's good and what's bad, you can't agree on a foundation of absolute good. Life should be good. I'm just saying, these are some basic standards. Life overall should be good or the natural order should be good uh, there's basic laws of nature you know there's things there's standards that should be considered good and there should be things that's considered evil you know so if we can't ha we don't have standards then we don't we don't know so these are the things that uh, Minister gave us a couple of pieces on. Uh, and what I would say is he touched on Anthony Fauci, Bill Gates, the vaccine agenda. But he also told us that there is a true vaccine. Excuse me, there is a true disease, coronavirus 19, which is deadly. Killed a student minister. Hafiz Muhammad in the student uh, regional minister in New York, who was a very powerful brother who has touched a lot of people's lives. And they killed a lot of people. New York seems to be a very deadly place for the coronavirus. I mean, something's about New York. And the minister did touch base and because some of my research, you know how Wuhan in China is a bioweapons laboratory hub and Fort Detrick which a lot of the information that a lot of us believe that uh, the the coronavirus came out of Fort Detrick. He said, the minister said that if you knew where it came from, then you would be able to control it. And uh, it appears based on what we're seeing, based upon what we know that is important for white supremacy to be maintained, which is money and their lives and their power that they can't really control this virus 
and uh, there's some good things and bad things that we're seeing. He's also touched, touched base with us and told us to look at Cuba. Look at Cuba, look at remedies. The minister said there's 14 remedies and treatments uh, out there. So that's something for us to investigate. So I'm going to be on, you know, looking into that more. I know that Fauci is a liar. Bill Gates is a liar. They have a, a depopulation agenda, which we know from the Memorandum 200, popularized official U.S. government policy, 1974, by Henry Kissinger, which was the Secretary of State of the United States, under you know at that time. So you, <laughs> uh, you know, the reports are out there. It was declassified in like the 1990s. So. You know, people who want to not believe what's the truth, that's the problem with some of us because, you know, that's what's a forked tongue. They something they put out something, but when you bring them what they put out, they deny it and it confuses you because they're legitimized. They have the power to legitimize. So black folks, we have to take our power to legitimize. You know, we have the power to legitimize. We need to use that power. Uh... And that brings me to another point that the minister uh, put out. He talked about, you know, Israel, how they train the police. We got to just tell those police quit. He said, quit. Let them quit. We have the power to protect ourselves. And we have the power to legitimize our security services. And I think that... Uh, the militia that made itself known at Stone Mountain and uh, in Arizona is a big part of legitimizing our own security forces. You know, the black black people have the power to do all of this stuff, uh, but we have to assert our authority and we have to legitimize ourselves. And whatever problems that we need to clean up after that, we can do that. I, help, I would ask black people not to jump off criticizing, you know, because we all, I, I see some comments from some of our people. We always want to find something wrong. There's always something wrong to find. Uh, let's try to think more in solution. How can it be good? How can it be effective? If you see a problem, respectfully present the problem. You know, present the problem in a respectful way, in a way that you would want it to be successful, just as you would present the problem to the FBI or to the police. You know, if we see the problems with the police, we need more police training. See how that that criticism, it maintains the police, but it just makes enhances them, makes them better. So when we see, you know, a black unit black people trying to organize and control their own resources and systems uh, when we do a criticize let's criticize in a way that builds up constructive criticism right so that's that point um, then I you know we, we are forever in the self developing little situation with the black men versus black women you know and all of this silly stuff now these are a segment of our community it's not silly because it's legitimate and it's a division point. And uh, it also shows us the weakness. This is, this to me, in my study, to me, this is part of the weakness that allowed the white man the power to defeat us. Because uh, anytime you have, there's a lot of black brothers out here that think that we can rule, rule over women with force and... Uh, negative uh brutal barbarian methods this is not how you rule in black society you know the black man and the black woman you know i've counseling counseling two couple you know counseling a couple uh because they're having some issues both of them are absolutely good people both of them they are very good matches for each other, but they don't have experience in maintaining a relationship. 
and they haven't studied on how to maintain a relationship. We don't have the history on maintaining relationships. And this is the problem because we get into a relationship and once the little sex wears down, we just sit there. And when we get offended by each other, we don't want to rock the boat. This is the worst problem in the world. You should be looking for every difference of opinion, every problem that you have with your mate, and you want to reconcile that. You want to reconcile it before it gets a big deal. If it's offensive, at least know that it's offensive. You guys may not agree on that particular point, but you need to understand on how to harmonize that disagreement. And you need to know how to express that disagreement without offending each other. You don't want to offend the, 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 the core of your mate. You don't want that. You want to respect that. I don't care how long y'all have been together. And you have to understand, you always have to be about solutions. The little effort that you take, I don't care how bad you think that you don't want to put any more effort inside of this and you know you thought you tried everything and you've convinced yourself that it's over the little the little the the efforts that you put in bringing yourself back to a state of happiness especially if you have a cooperative partner who wants to try to resolve the situations and and is sincere about trying to resolve you have to by duty you have to give them a chance if there's no physical uh, abuse if there's you know these types of uh, if there's no abuse uh, that can't be forgiven you are this your job your family job because when you break up your family you're not only creating a pattern for yourself because you're going to have to do the same behaviors for anyone else that you get with and if you go out in society and become a hoe or or you know as a male or female a hoe and just have it sleeping around you're destroying more people and you're destroying yourself you're not going to bring satisfaction to yourself then then any children that you have are going to have to learn these lessons as well. They're going to be hurt and pain. You're just passing on pain to the next generation. So it is your job. It's your job. It's your job. I don't care how bad you think you've been beaten down. You know, black folks, we've been, we was, we survived slavery. You know, our genetic and our lineage survived. You know, so much pain and so much. We can, we can sit and suffer a little bit of extra emotional development to try to get our relationships in check we got to do it we have to do it so you may have to take a little rest and come back and go ahead and try to make that thing work and usually a lot of that times i guarantee you people if if you begin opening up that ch channel of communication and don't respond if if you have a problem with responding you know if you have a problem with responding because you get triggered because your spouse or somebody is is is, is uh, communicating a few hot details use somebody else just chill out for a second and don't say anything for at least two or three days until you can think about everything that was said and try your best try your best to think pray what is the smartest, most efficient, and best way to respond to this thing? How can I emotionally handle these kinds of feelings in my spouse? Manage these things. How can I maybe open up myself to explore uh, these, uh, uh, open up some of the boundaries that I wanted to have? Maybe your honey wants to, uh, you know, open up. If, if there are certain things that are not beyond the core of your being, Explore those things because if it's not something that is disgusting or destructive to the core of your being, and it's just something that you know your your spouse wants to understand or develop, be open to listen to that. Be open to it. I mean, and a lot of times it's not even sexual, but it might be sexual. It might be traveling. It might be all kinds of things. So, and also black folks have to understand that the male and the female is part of the same essence. The ideas of development can come from the man and can, can come from the female. 
the criterion of whether it should be followed through is not that who had the idea it's if the ideas will develop the family and we can get with it support the ideas of your spouse support those ideas if you want them to support your ideas support their ideas and uh you know and then it's finally the last point that i want to touch on is this we got a dysfunctional part of our community who just insist on fighting each other you got black men that want to divest from black women and convince other people of this foolishness and then you have black women who usually are in response to this but they're still is being dysfunctional because they feed into this back and forth petty pity party and they offend each other uh they're creating a big problem and uh, that needs to be, you know, just stopped. It really needs to stop. But I think it's not going to stop until we get, I don't really see it stopping because these people, at this point, we don't have the type of control of our society and our resources that we need to really stop it. But just understand, if you're in this type of category as a black man, uh, there are many black women, but you have to change your mindset. There's black women that love black men. And black women, there's black men that love black women. But they're not going to sit there and be abused, you know, verbally and spiritually. Just because you have a mindset of abuse towards them. So... I really don't see that changing in some of these people because they are set and dead set on destroying the other gender. And this is wholly, 100% a product of white supremacy. It is absolutely a product of white supremacy using division to, um, to weaken, to weaken our, our society. But uh, it can be defeated. It can be de it can be overcome, and I believe the solution to those problems is going to create a, a stronger society for Black people. I'm not seeing that that's going to end soon until we uh, create a situation of auto a more autonomous and an independent situation, so that we can control the resources. Because those people who want to divest from our society, they are fucking cut off you are fucking cut off I, you know we can't have nobody abusing our people we can't have black people black men abusing even in verbal you can't there's nothing better than a black woman for a black man there's nothing you it's impossible we were naturally developed through we went through the same trials through the same history, genetically, epigenetically. We are epigenetically designed for each other. So uh, when you want to diminish and demean, you know, our own family, our own people, our own lineage, I don't care if you're a male or a female, as we grow in power, you are going to be fucking cut off. And you know, you'll just fizzle out. And if you're happy with that, that's cool. So anyway, those are the thoughts I want to touch base on. Super Mike out. You know, let's try to uh, develop business out here, trying to uh, develop my uh, contracting business. And uh, we're just trying to do self-development and get out of your comfort zone. All right, peace.